It becomes necessary for us now to continue that matter a see where Pung Jalai left Mandakini Devi. All Warkadian's statement about the reason she disappeared in the crowd and confusion was true. Mandakini saw a conspirator named Ravidasan in the crowd that entered the fort along with the Vilakara force. Is it normal for people who are deficient in one sense to have the other sense working well? The Mantakin is deaf, the mouth does not speak. Her eyesight was so sharp. All Warkadian and Pungazali were looking after goddess Mandakini. So Ravi Dasan, who was invisible to them, became the target of Mandakini's gaze. Mandakini also had a natural emotional intelligence that could foresee the coming good and bad. So she realizes that Ravi Dasan has come here for some evil purpose. Didn't she already know that Ravi Dasan tried to kill Aromas Hivarman in Ela? Her gaze never left Ravi Dasan as she walked the streets of Tanjore with Adal's crowd. At the height of the confusion, did not the crowd disperse when the little reaper's horse came up? At that moment, Mandakini saw Ravi Dasan and another man hurrying through an alleyway. Immediately aiming for that direction she also sped off and entered the same alleyway. Within a minute of this happening, Thirumalai and Pungazali could not notice Mandakini as they were pushed by the crowd. Later, she was gone. Mandakini entered the lane and then looked back twice. Pungazali and Thirumalai are coming but they are not seen. But she thought that the most important thing was to continue Ravi Dasan. At the beginning of this history, Ravi Dasan and his companion followed the route by which Vandiyadeva had escaped from the men of Kalante Kakandar. We have met Ravi Dasan's friend before. He is Saman Samhavan whom we saw in the midnight conspiracy meeting at Tirapurambayam school. Both of them entered the alley very fast. They jumped over the fallen trees without paying any attention to them. They also ignored the muddy puddles caused by the accumulation of rainwater. The tree branches were swaying as the wind was still blowing lightly. Drops of water fell from the branches. They have no desire to be followed by anyone. So they hurried on without looking back. Even if they looked back they could not have seen Mandakini Devi. At last, their speedy journey came to a stop at the back wall of the palace garden of the great gardener. A tree uprooted by the storm fell on top of the wall and was broken. Ravi Dasan and Saman Sambhavan easily climbed the tree and jumped over the wall into the garden beyond. Seeing them jumping, Goddess Mandakini also climbed the same tree for a while and landed in the garden beyond. Ravi Dasan left Saman Sambhavan at a distance and approached the palace of the great Palyavatarayar. The palace was seen as empty as the great Palyavataray and the young queen of Palyavar were absent. However, only women's voices were heard. Once two nurses came to the back porch of the mansion. They saw that many trees in the garden were broken and fallen. Aha! Isn't it like the Ashoka forest destroyed by an Umar? Said one. If our goddess Siddha were here right now, she would be very heartbroken. Said another. After talking like this for a while, when they were going back inside, Ravi Dasan made a sound like an owl's voice with his mouth closed. Both nurses looked back. Ravi Dasan was hiding well. One of the nurses said, Party. The Koden is screaming in broad daylight. Even the owl has lost its wits in the storm yesterday. She said. The other said nothing. She left without replying for a while and came back. She arrived at Vasantha Mandapam, which was situated between the Palyavar Palace and the Treasure Dungeon. Readers may remember that it was in this hall that Vandiyathevan met the Queen of Palvur. The friend stared at the garden. The owl's voice was heard again. The woman walked towards the place where the voice came from. Ravi Dasan also came forward from the cover of the tree. She looked up at him with magnetic eyes. Enchantress, are you here? Even the youngest queen isn't here? Why are you here? She asked. Lady, I am sent by the queen. Said Ravi Dasan. Didn't you leave the queen where you were? Why did you come here? If anyone knows. If you know what will happen. Don't say that. The little villain is suspicious of us. He called me one day and gave me a stern warning. He ordered me to come and tell him if the wizard comes again. He's a bastard, go. 
their time is almost at hand. Don't worry about anything. I want the key to the dungeon and bring it quickly. Said Ravi Dasan. Oh no. I won't. Behold, thy mistress's ring. Said Ravi Dasan showing the signet ring of the younger queen. Where did you steal this or who saw it? Bad sinner. You call me a thief? Do you say this when you see the youngest queen trembling at me? Look. Nine devils will come tonight and carry you alive to the graveyard. No, no. Let all your devils be with you. What's come to me? If you show me the ring of the younger queen, I'll bring you what you ask. But don't be in a hurry. The women often come here to see the garden in ruins. I'll bring you the key while everyone's eating. Wait till then. Come on, bring me some food too. It's been two days since I've eaten. Bring me plenty. Said Ravi Dasan. After the nurse left, Ravi Dasan and Saman Sambhavan were sitting on a fallen tree and talking. Unbeknownst to them, Mandakini was also sitting in a hidden place some distance away. Although she did not understand anything that Ravi Dasan and the nurse said, she assumed that something was about to happen. After a long time the grandmother came back. Ravi Dasan got up and went ahead. He bought the bag of rice and the bunch of keys that she had brought. After that, they both reached Vasantha Mandapam and followed the path leading to the treasure dungeon there. After turning one key, two keys, and a third key, the lock opened. Inside the dungeon was a single bubble. Ravi Dasan looked at the nurse and said, Oh! I forgot something. How can I go in this dark room without a lamp? At least bring a lamp. He said. How can I bring a torch and a lamp in broad daylight? If anyone sees and suspects. I don't know that. Are you saying you don't have that much skill? I don't believe it. At least bring a fire. Or else the night will send twelve marauding devils. Oh, stay still. I'll get it somehow, said the nurse. Ravi Dasan said, I will finish eating by then. After the friend went towards the palace, Ravi Dasan also entered the garden with a bundle of rice and came to Saman Samhavan. Giving him the sack of rice, he said, perhaps you will be in the dungeon for two or three days. There must be a right opportunity, right? So keep this sack of rice. Take the job and come with me without making a noise. The woman is going to bring the torch. You must enter the dungeon by then. He said. Both went quickly. Mandakini also followed without their knowledge.